this video, I'm going to make kind of an interesting conversion of this purely mechanical trap, which works well as a mechanical trap, but I want a trap that is going to be able to contain a number of different size animals, all the way from mouse up to maybe a squirrel or a cat. And to do that, I need to make this uh, operate by a sensor. So I'm going to use a PIR sensor, and what that'll do is it'll pick up the, mo the heat and motion of the animal and then transfer a signal to a solenoid that will operate this lever instead of the existing mechanical interface that does it now. So I'm going to take out a couple of mechanical parts and basically put in some electrical parts. And the circuit consists of four parts. Passive infrared sensor detects heat and motion. And we have a 12 volt DC battery to provide the power to that sensor. And on the output side we have a switch normally open held closed in this case. And then there's a solenoid, which is our electrical mechanical interface. It's going to close the door. Okay, the lever has to go. It's not going to be using that anymore. And it's just held on here with a couple of rings. So we just turn those off. And when we pull it out, it will uh, that platform will just sit flat down there, not being needed to sense anymore. And the handle, the carrying handle is in the way of wrapping it. Because we're going to be using this half inch wire mesh which is going to be small enough to contain a mouse. Okay, this half inch mesh happened to be the same width as our trap is long, so we didn't have to trim it. And then we're just wrapping it up, bending it. It's fairly stiff material, so you know we have to work it a little bit and bend it around the corners until we're all the way to the bottom. And then we're going to just trim it off. Just trim it off, a little bit of overlap, leaving some long uh, strands to bend over. Uh, to complete the uh, complete the wrap on the bottom. There's the end piece. We're ready to mount some components. Our solenoid is going to be first, and uh, we'll follow that with our push button switch, which is this, which is in here to cut power to the solenoid uh, when the door opens up. And we're going to mount the solenoid with this bracket. I made these. Uh, this little clamping device here, just out of some sheet metal, just cut it with some shears and drilled a couple holes in it. I couldn't find anything that I had that was pre-made uh, around my workshop that would fit for that. And that'll work pretty good in here. I did the same thing at the uh, that lever on the left that you see. It's on the solenoid spindle. The solenoid spindle, that's also just a little piece, strip of sheet metal cut to size and drilled. Okay, connecting that that lever um, with a uh, cotter pin, with a spindle with a cotter pin. And I'll just bend that over and that's going to connect the pieces together here, allow for some pulling action. Put some juice on it. Now I'm going to mount the cutout switch. It's flat on there. And our switch will go through like so. The stroke of this switch was too short. And as I put the bracket in, that's why I put that, uh, that wood shim on there. I, I glued that into place so that the switch would actually close when the door is all the way open. Let's test the operation of the switch. Open, doors closed, doors open, switch is closed. The battery we're going to slip right in here in the middle. I'm going to hold it down with a bungee cord. And here's the device that makes it all possible, the passive infrared sensor, PIR. And this is, has to sit above the mesh by about three inches, which I discovered through trial and error. So what I've devised here is to put it on the underside of a bowl, which sets it up about the right height, and also provides kind of a cone to prevent false um, activation in that range. Drilled a couple holes in the bowl, a hole for the wiring, and now we'll install it. Okay, there's a wiring diagram, pretty simple. On the right is the battery inputs. And I'm putting in the positive right now. It's going to go to the positive terminal on the battery. And then there's the black wire is the negative.
terminal on the battery, battery minus. So we'll get that screw tightened in there. And then the on the left are the two outputs, output positive and output ground. The positive end we're going to put on the switch, plus 12 volts output. Okay, we'll crimp a male spade on this end here. The other end will be female. And here's our minus 12 to complete the circuit. That's going to come from the solenoid. Now this does unplug. This sensor was designed for LED lighting and it has an off delay on it. We don't need that. So we're setting it down to the minimum of one minute. Just using a wire tie now to attach this to the underside of this bowl. I'm crimping on some insulated fittings on the output side. Okay, now the wires have to feed through the hole that we put in our, um, I'm going to call it the sensing bowl. And then when we're done feeding it through, we'll plug it in. Okay, this is going to rust right on the end of the trap, waiting to sense an animal. Alright, let's wire this up the rest of the way. Going onto the switch now, I'm crimping the partner to this insulated um, spade fitting that we put on the other end. We'll just plug those two together. And now on to the other side. We're going to go from the solenoid to the negative on the output. Now here we're going to hook the solenoid up. I have to crimp a fitting on there. I slipped a piece of insulation over the top of this. We'll crimp this fitting on here. And now we can hook the two together. And we'll slip our insulator over the top. Now we need to connect our solenoid to our switch. What we're going to do is use a butt splice. Okay, now I'm going to connect it up, and it's going to activate the trap. That's normal the first time. Now we have to do is wait till the one minute passes, and then reset it, and it should be armed and ready for the target. Okay, to, find, to make sure that it's the timer has cleared, activate the switch, and it's not working, so we're ready to go. I'm going to simulate a small animal coming in, so I'm heating it up with a blow dryer since this needs heat to detect. That should be all it takes. Let's check it out. Oh, uh, wait just a minute. We don't want our sensor to detect something on the outside of the trap. So we're going to have to cover that up. What I came up with was a piece of vinyl, like this, that I stretched around there. I just want to point out that I have a removable board here that makes it easier for cleaning. And also on the end of it, I basically have a little water cup, because you don't want the uh, animals to get dehydrated and if you can't get to them right away. And there's the bait. And then this simply slides in and out. Okay, this is live action. Watch from the left. And there he is. And it worked. Beautifully. And I left this mouse in here for a while just to make sure he couldn't find his way out. Which he could not. So he gets a new home. And my trap has also proven irresistible to chipmunks. I've caught several in the outbuilding. Okay, let's take him for a little ride. Okay, I'm going to be making more interesting material, so please subscribe if you'd like to be notified when it uh, comes out. And I'll throw up a couple other links here to some material that also might uh, you might find helpful.